Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This is my Father's House International Christian Discipleship Ministry. And we welcome you to come here today. It's not by chance you turn this, this, this channel. It's not by chance you are watching this. By all means, hit the like button and share. Share for people to get blessed in such a magnificent way. I'm going to read an open scripture. And that comes from the seventh chapter, seventh um, chapter of John. And I'll be reading from the 38th verse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It reads as such. And he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But they, but this the he of the spirit, which they believe on him, should receive. For the Holy Ghost who had not been yet given because Jesus had not been glorified. Let's bow our head. Elohim, everlasting God, Eroa, the God who sees us, Yohe Yahe, Elohim, the self existing God. We come before you now in the name of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. We come with joy, Father God, for we know you're going to make a, a special visitation on this, this service today, oh God. And whoever wants it, oh God, we know that you're going to speak to the heart and change the light forever. I pray right now, Father God, that, that our eyes be open and our ears be open, oh God. I pray for Father God, if there's anything wrong we have not confessed, bring to our members right now, Father God, so we can confess it and come as pure as we know how in the name of Jesus Christ and others. Father God, today is a day for such a time as this. Such time as this, that you will manifest the vision, oh God, into reality in the name of Jesus. Such a time as this, oh God, when you be, be, be calling the saints, oh God, hallelujah, the leaders, the, the, the gifted ones, and they still understand their, their gifting and their calling in the name of Jesus. This is the day, such a time as this, oh God, when you will speak to the heart of the lonely lost one, Father God, those that don't have no hope at all, oh God. This is my understanding in Jesus Christ. He is our hope of glory. I pray for the Father God that this service today will be a life-changing meditation right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we love you. We honor you. I'm praying for those who are in prison, oh God. Touch their hearts right now, Father. Change the way. Let them have that, that life, like life, life, life being told to you, oh God. I pray for the Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch those who are in the hospital. Touch them in the name of Christ Jesus. Give them that healing. And those who are passed on, this is the families of God. Let them understand what it is. Whereas if, they, if their loved one has not known Christ, that means they must know them themselves in order for them to understand when they when they pass away, Father God, they should know the journey and where they're going home. Brother Father God, I'm praying for the ministry of apostle. 
Leslie Richardson, that he will be lifted and touch the people he's ministering today, as well as what he did yesterday and the day before. I'm praying that it will break out, Father God, for such a time as this, where we're in the, the month of, of eight, which is a new beginning. I pray, oh God, that the and we have a new beginning in our lives, oh God. And we would have a new beginning in Christ Jesus, oh God. And we have a new beginning in our journey, in our walk with you, oh God. I thank you, God, for your open eyes and ears. Now, Father God, as I as I end this prayer, Father God, I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will come down and captivate this recording right now in such a way when everybody sees it hears it or told about the Father of God they understand that you sent your son Jesus Christ to on this earth by burn by a virgin to live that life Father God to live a life for example for us oh God but there came a day when he had to came for the main purpose and that's to die at the exact fact for our sins oh God but he didn't stop there he rose again Father God and all power has been given to him and he dedicated to us. Now, Father God, I praise you and I honor you. And Holy Ghost, have your way today, tomorrow, and every day. Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 I now turn it over to Prophetess Olivia. Amen. Thank you for that prayer. Welcome everyone to my father's house. We are online today. Let me uh, make sure I shift the screen a little bit. All right, hopefully y'all can see me. We're online today. And so we just wanna welcome all of you from all over Denver, Colorado, all over the country and all over the world. Thanks for joining us. Our servant leaders, Apostle Richardson and uh, Pastor Lily Richardson are traveling today. They are blessing the people of Maranatha Church in Michigan with the word of God. And so we are here carrying on with the word of God. So again, thank you for joining us. A couple of administrative things. If you are on YouTube, make sure you say hi in the chat real quickly. Just say good morning say hello. Um, and also, I want to make sure that you thumbs up. So like the, the video in the chat and then share. So share this out to your social media platforms. And then also, if you're on a phone, maybe you're on a phone, I want you to take the YouTube link and then text it to a friend or multiple friends, text it to your family life group, make sure that they have the link so that they can join. Um, the more people that have access, the more people can hear the word of God. Amen. So we're, I'm just so excited to be here, so excited to be here. And I have a great word for you. I want you to settle into your seat, settle into your, wherever you're at, if you're at your kitchen table, wherever you are at today. Um, and we're gonna dive into the word of God. We're talking about living water today. Before we dive into that, we just wanna do a little bit of praise and worship. So I'm gonna play a song today. Y'all don't wanna hear me sing even though I think I sound really good to God. I don't know if y'all want to hear me. So we're going to play this song and I just want you to worship. Most of you, I believe, know the words of the song. So go ahead and sing and um, we'll be back in a few minutes. Hopefully y'all can hear this okay. Rise, my 
Amen. 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 So that was Zoe Grace. If you haven't heard of them, they're twin sisters and they're amazing. So you can look them up on YouTube. Um, that song is always in such an incredible blessing to me. Um, and just talking about fear and stepping out on faith and water. We're going to talk about water today, living water. And in the Bible, water is mentioned well over 700 times. And we always think about um, how Jesus walked on water and Jesus turned water into wine. But the thing that stands out for me the most is discussions around living water and what that is. So we're going to dive right, get it, dive, <laughs> dive right into living water and talking about oh, the blessings of God. Amen. I'm going to read for you, and we have a couple scriptures um, that I'm going to read, but gosh, the, the woman at the well, she has my heart, the Samaritan woman at the well. So we're going into John 4, and Brother Bernard touched on that a little bit earlier when he read scripture, but John 4, we are going to read verses 1 through 14. So if you want to turn your Bible or turn your digital Bible app to John 4. And again, we're reading 1 through 14, and I'm living through, I'm reading through the New Living Translation. Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he had bapti was baptizing and making more disciples than John through Jesus himself didn't, though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually, he came to the Samaritan village of Sachar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tried from, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well around the noontime. Soon, a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Oh God. Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift of God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. Verse 11, but sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed. Jesus replied, anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. I feel like I wanna I keep reading. <laughs> I'm going to keep reading. 15. Please, sir, this woman said, give me this water. Then I'll never be thirsty again. And I won't have to come here to get water. I'm going to end there. Um, I love the story of uh, the, the story of the Samaritan woman. It goes on. So if, if you are, if you have time after this, I want to encourage you to continue reading after verse 15. Um, as Jesus starts to reveal some personal things to the Samaritan woman and really starts to dive into her past and her heart and continues to minister to her there. Very important note is that Jews never spoke to, engaged with Samaritan people at all. And so 
for Jesus to even engage this woman was a big deal. She recognized that. And then he was able to talk to her about living water and what living water is. Um, I'm going to read one more scripture, and then we're going to dive into really talking about what all this means. And so this next one is John 7, verses 37 through 39. And if this is if this is blessing you already, I want you to type amen into the chat. John 7, 37 through 39. Jesus' promise is living water. On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowd, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink, for the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. Verse uh, 39, when he said living water, he was speaking of the spirit who would be given to anyone and everyone believing in him. But the spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much for waking us up this morning, giving us another opportunity to proclaim your word, Father God, to be an example of love and light on this earth. We thank you so much for the word that you've given us, Father God, for this opportunity to soak in your grace, to soak in your word, Father God, in your spirit, Lord God. We thank you for this opportunity to commune, Lord God, even though online, Father God, we know that as our hearts are touched and joined, Father God, even in this virtual space, Lord God, that you will move and make and perform miracles, Father God. I lift up everyone listening, everyone under the sound of my voice, Father God, everyone under the hearing of your word. Bless them in a new way. Give them living water, Father God. Quench their spiritual thirst in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, so when we're talking about living water, we're talking about the spirit of God, the spirit of God moving and breathing deep inside of us. Um, I have just this, uh, God speaks to me all the time about his living water, specifically about hydrotherapy. If you've heard of hydrotherapy, it can come in a lot of different forms. And the world talks about hydrotherapy in a lot of different ways of drinking your water, um, hydrotherapy can be, um, if you've ever gone into a hot tub and the, the warmth of the water and how the warmth and the movement of a hot tub can heal sore muscles. Um, there is a hydrotherapy where you go in hot water in a hot tub and then you jump in cold water and that shocks your blood system. It actually increases your blood circulation and increases your immune system. Um, and then you go back in the hot water and then it flips and then you go back into the cold water. That's hydrotherapy. Hydrotherapy can literally be um, breathing in steam. So if you were to pour some hot boiling water into a bowl, and put a towel over your head, you can breathe in that steam and that will unlock. If you have a cold, it'll open up your sinuses. That's hydrotherapy. Um, hydrotherapy comes in so many different forms. And the Lord for gosh, years keeps reminding me of hydrotherapy, but specifically in this notion of living water and soaking in that living water. Um, I have, if you, if you deal with this, I want you to either just raise your hand at home. No one can see you. So it's okay. Or raise your hand in the chat. I have a hard time staying on top of drinking water. I just do. And I try all the things. I don't know if you all have bought like a special, beautiful, um, water bottle thinking that would, would change things. And I actually forgot my water bottle downstairs. I was going to make it a point to make sure I had my water sitting, sitting here. If you all have a water bottle sitting next to you or a glass of water, I want you to take a sip right now. I have a problem with drinking water and I need to work on that because I know that a lot of the, my physical ailments will be healed with water, headaches, tiredness, um, any, anything and everything can be healed with just drinking more water. So the, so the Holy Spirit speaks to me on that. He speaks to me on water drinking. Um, I don't know if y'all have heard the song. This is kind of the um, TikTok slash Instagram trend, the song, Drink Water and Mind My Business. So 
that's what I need to be doing, drinking water and minding my own business. But I know that it'll heal so many different ailments, ailments in my body. Living water will heal so many ailments, issues, conflict, where we wrestle and struggle in our spiritual nature. Living water will heal our spiritual ailments. We have had this um, tradition. I don't even know if we call it a tradition, but it's become that um, where Mr. Wallace and I, since we turned 40, so we are, we're 43 right now, we turned 43 this year. We go to Mexico every year now. So we've been to Mexico three times and we've made it this annual thing to do. And it is not that expensive. We just, we went to Mexico a couple months ago, um, obviously super masked up with COVID and making sure that we are safe as we go and as we come back but the flights to mexico to cancun was 180 dollars on frontier no joke and we all know that frontier will nickel and dime you on your seats on your baggage so we wherever we go we pack one backpack that is it and we become disciplined in this so wherever we go whether it's two days four days six days um, I think we were gone for eight days once we pack one backpack so we don't deal with the extra fees, but we also feel super light on our feet and we can move and go anywhere and people are actually really surprised when we land in Mexico and they want to take our bags or, you know, where's your luggage, we, we have a backpack, and that's it, but when we go to Mexico the the water is incredible, the water is beautiful and if you've ever been to any coast. Um, it could be, you know, we, we've traveled to Santa Monica, we've, uh, in California, different coasts have different types of water, right? Different clarity, um, different countries and different coasts on, on various countries have various clarities of water. And what I've noticed as we've traveled, depending on if we're in, you know, Cabo or Cancun or, um, gosh, any place, the clarity of the water has to do with the foundation that it's in. I'm going to say that again. The clarity of the water has to do with the vessel or the foundation that that water is in. As God begins to move in you and the Holy Spirit is moving inside of you, the clarity of that living water, the clarity of you being able to hear the Holy Spirit speak to you personally and into your life has to do with the condition of the vessel. The vessel is you. The vessel is me. That vessel was the ocean or a pool. Think about a pool that you've gone into. When the bottom of that pool is clean, the clarity of that water is even clearer. Um, we went and we, at one point, swam with the sharks. And if any of you know me, you know that I can't swim. So this is like, it's kind of, I'm testing my faith in God, just the fact that I am in the ocean swimming with turtles and whales. Um, I have a life jacket on and I, I need to stop saying I can't swim because I feel like I'm not giving the Holy Spirit enough credit and myself enough credit. I can swim okay decently sometimes in certain waters in the right mindset with the right atmosphere. <laughs> um, but I'm not the best swimmer. So I'm going to start saying that I'm working. I'm improving on my swimming instead of saying I can't swim. I'm working on it. But we went and we swam with these massive turtles, huge turtles. But the water was so murky, we could barely see them. The ocean was dirty, the, the bottom of the ocean, because it was so shallow, the sand was kicking up. And so it made things very unclear versus swimming in a different body and a different part of the ocean where the water is crystal clear. You could see many, many feet deep because the water was clear, because the bottom of that ocean was clear. We were able to snorkel and see so many great things. If you've gone in a pool, the reason why the tiles at the bottom of most pools are blue is to make the water appear blue. The water is really truly impacted by what it's in. If you've ever um, spilt water, the water will conform to the floor where it'll spread. If you've ever put water into a vase versus a glass, water will conform to the vessel that it's in. So while we are so blessed with the, the living water that flows inside of us through the Holy Spirit, the clarity and the power of that water is based on 
the vessel that it's in, in us. And so making sure that our vessel is clean, making sure that we are um, just doing all of our hydrotherapy from a spiritual level, that we are um, placing that water, the living water in a clean vessel, in a clear vessel, in a beautiful, shining vessel. Um, when we were in Mexico this past time, I was going through a lot, a lot, a lot. And I spent a lot of time just in the water. And while I'm working on my swimming, one thing that I can do really well is I can float on my back. And as I was floating on my back, the Holy Spirit was ministering to me. I know I looked a little crazy. I'm in the pool in Mexico at this resort and everybody's happy and I'm just crying, floating on my back and just thanking God for the, the spirit that was ministering to me in that moment. But here's what he told me about this, the water, the living water. Again, he said, living takes on the sh living water, water takes on the shape that it's placed in the form and condition of the vessel that it's in. The clarity and condition, the color of that water is based on the condition and the color of the floor, whether that's the pool, the ocean, the foundation, that's me. It also takes on the color of the sky. So when we look at those two things, the foundation, the vessel, the sky, that is God, the blue sky, the clear vessel, the water takes on those colors. This We can get into a whole science um, lesson here about physics and how light refract, reflects off the water, et cetera, et cetera, but we won't do that today. As I'm floating on my back, I'm looking straight up into the heavens and I can't look side to side. If you've ever done this, and I'm gonna encourage y'all to do this now that we've talked about this, then you can really feel what I'm talking about. Go to your pool, especially as the summer winds down before pools close. Um, go to your rec center. Um, we don't have oceans here, but if you travel, go ahead into the ocean, go into your bathtub and you could do this. Um, you could put your head back, right? So when your head is back and, you, and I'm looking straight up at the sky, I see the heavens. I can clearly see God when I'm focused on him. If I turn my head side to side and I'm looking around, I'm looking at the kids splashing in the water or, you know, whatever else is going around, around me, what's going on around me, I start to lose my focus and I actually start to sink a little bit. My floating doesn't work as well if I'm not looking straight up at, at, at him. I have to continue to face the sky, see God, face God. The sounds around me are muffled when I'm floating on my back. So the water literally is covering my ears. And when water covers your ears, you actually, it's this really great, cool sound where you start to hear your own breathing. I can only hear myself. I can hear my own breathing. I can hear my thoughts and I can hear the Holy Spirit. The sounds that are going on around me, the craziness of this world, the worries, the trials, the struggles, the voice of the enemy, I can't hear as well. It's muffled because of the water, because of that living water. So you have to stay with me. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely in a, a physical um, example, but this is all very, very much spiritual. I can only hear my own breath and God's voice when I'm floating on my back. When I'm floating on my back, I become weightless. I literally become weightless. My burdens become easy. The yoke becomes light. All of that weight that's on my shoulders, that's on my chest, even the place where I can't breathe really well. Sometimes when I get super anxious or worried and things are happening around me, my chest gets tight. I can't breathe as well. But when I was floating on my black back, I could breathe. Everything was light. God literally stripped those burdens away. I have to keep my chest lifted to the sky. So when you float, and this I learned in a, in a swimming class back in high school, which was eons and eons, decades and decades ago, you kind of have to arch your back a little bit to create a little bit of a pocket of air underneath your back. That is what helps you float. 
So when my chest is to the sky and this, like the Holy Spirit was like, live, give me your heart. Oh, I'm going to start crying. Oh, God, live, give me your heart. Lift your chest to the sky. Give me your heart. Give me your burdens. Give me the weight. Give me your trials. Focus on me. Keep your eyes into the sky. And he will take it away. As I'm floating and I lose my focus, again, I start worrying about what's around me, who's watching this poor Black woman in this pool. <laughs> who's working on her swimming and who's crying and just worshiping the Lord. If I start to focus on what's going on around me, the people, the eyes that are watching, I lose focus. My faith starts to fade. I lose my trust in him. And I start to I start to drown. I start to go under, literally. And I have to like hurry up and put my feet down and flail my arms a little bit and get up before water gets in my mouth because I lost my focus. I, re I am reminded in that moment that Olivia cannot fully swim, <laughs> but I can float on my back when I'm giving everything to God. It takes a lot of practice to do this. I go to the rec center, um, go to the pool. It takes some practice, especially for someone who um, has feared water. It takes practice. And the more I do it, the more I'm able to block those things out. The more we bask in his presence and put our faith and trust in God, we really embrace what that living water is. The water, the well that doesn't run dry the streams of living water that flow through us, which is the spirit of God, the more we do that and we hand everything over to him, the easier it gets, the less distracted we get. The more we, can, we do that, the more we can focus on him and not the issues and the problems in our lives. So when troubles come, when troubled water comes, when the tests and the trials come in our life, we practice this. We know this. We have faith in God. Living water flows through us. We can float on our back. We can resist the noise and the chaos. And we could trust in him. It's smooth sailing. It's the most amazing thing. One of the most amazing analogies God has given me in a real life moment um, is floating on my back. And when we float, he could take us wherever he needs us to go. The water can just easily take us in the direction we need to go. There's no more fighting him. There's no more resisting where God wants to take us. There's no more fear because he's got it. Living water has flowed and continues to flow from God to quench the thirst of the spiritually parched. I want you to take a sip of water right now. I'm going to pretend as soon as I get off here, y'all, I'm going to drink a, a whole bunch of water. <laughs> I'm feeling it already. I'm feeling, feeling the, the, the thirst, both spiritually uh, and naturally, but some of us are spiritually dehydrated, seriously, spiritually dehydrated. And we're walking around and we're trying to hear God and see God. We're trying to um, come against the enemy Oh my gosh, how do you come against the enemy when you're spiritually dehydrated? Have you ever tried to do something dehydrated? Have you ever tried to just go on a walk outside and you don't, you don't have any water with you? Have you ever tried to run a marathon or just run up the block <laughs> with no water? You're dehydrated. Some of us are spiritually dehydrated. We're trying to fight. We're trying to handle the trials that are coming against us. And we're trying to do it without the Holy Spirit. We're tired. We're overwhelmed because we're spiritually dehydrated. Malia, when she was, um, both of my kids, gosh, Gabe and Malia, when they were 
three, four, five years old, they had the most incredible vocabulary. I'm like, where are they getting these words from? They come home from preschool and the babysitter and, and school and just have these like huge words. They wouldn't always use them correctly, but they were using these big words. And I remember Malia just coming home one day and she's like, or in the car, like, mommy, I'm parched. I was like, parched? What? You're three. How are you parched? What is happening here? Mommy, I'm parched. I just need something. I'm, I'm so parched right now. A lot of us are parched and we're trying to minister to others and we are spiritually dehydrated. As we are stepping into our God-given purpose, and that purpose looks different for every single one of us. At the core, though, of our God-giving purpose, we all have the same core. The same core is to preach the gospel, to be a witness onto this earth and unto his people, into the kingdom. The way we do that is going to look different for all of us. Our purpose is going to look a little bit dif different, but the foundation, the core of that purpose is to preach the gospel as streams of living water have flowed and continue to flow from him to quench the thirst of a spiritually parched world. We are living in a spiritually parched world. And I'm going to say that again, write that one down. We're living in a spiritually parched world. Can I get an amen from someone in the chat? We're living in a spiritually parched world. How can we as believers, as saints, live in a spiritually parched world if we're spiritually parched what oh oh lord how do we live in a spiritually parched world if we are spiritually parched how do we minister to a spiritually parched world if we're spiritually parched and yet we try to do that there's um, this whole saying about how you have to put on your own oxygen mask before you could put on the oxygen mask of someone next to you or your child. As a mom, I am still learning this. It's, it's taken a while and I am very close. <laughs> I don't know if we ever fully master this of as a mom or a parent putting on your own oxygen mask before we try to help and save our children. It is, it's hard because we want to save them first. Like, let me let's save my child first. And it's like, actually, no, you need to drink a little bit of water because you are dehydrated so that you can then pour into your child. I'm speaking to myself. This is, it's such a good word, y'all. I'm speaking to myself and God has preached this. The Holy Spirit has spoken this word to me year after year after year, again, back in uh, June when we were in Mexico and again earlier this week and again today as I am talking to you. Liv, you need to put on your spiritual oxygen mask. You need to drink your uh, living water, stay hydrated before I can pour into my kids, before I can pour into my husband, before I can pour into my family, into my friends. I have to be hydrated. We have to be hydrated. Our responsibility is to do the will of God and bring forth this living water to all who thirst for it. And we can only do that if we are hydrated ourselves. Sip of water. Take a sip of water. This is your cue. Take a sip of water. I'm going to read this, the last verse that we read one more time. And again, we were in John 7. One through four, I'm sorry, John four, our first verse was John four, one through 15. And then the last verse I read was John 7, 37 through 39. I'm going to read that one more time. John 7, 37 through 39, the promises of living water. On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is parched, as Malia would say, anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. Verse 39. And when he said living water, he was speaking of the spirit, the Holy Spirit that lives and dwells inside of each and every one of us who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. Well, I have 
news for y'all that Jesus has entered into his glory. His body has risen. He has been resurrected and the Holy Spirit has come to dwell inside of each and every one of us. We have living water flowing in us and it is up to us to activate that living water, to activate the spirit, to seek the spirit on a day-to-day basis so that we do not become spiritually hydrated. Think about what hydrotherapy might mean to you. Hydrotherapy in your worship. Oh my God. In my worship, I become rejuvenated. I become hydrated in the spirit. In my worship, I become new again. When you wake up in the morning and you're dehydrated and you need to take that first sip of water, some of us have water next to our beds. Not me because I'm not good at drinking water, but I'm working on it. I'm working on my swimming and I am working on drinking more water. But we have water in the morning because we're hydrated. We hadn't drank anything all night. I am preaching to myself and hopefully to you. (laughs) Grab that living water first thing in the morning hydrate all day long in your praise, in your worship, in just basking in the spirit. Keep your eye to heaven, keep your face to the sky so that you can float, so that weight is light. Shine your heart to God, give your heart to God. Give your burdens to him so he can take those. Imagine yourself floating on your back weightless in water. Imagine water covering your ears, the living water covering your ears so you can't hear the noise. You can't hear the craziness going on in your life. All you can hear is your own breath and the word of God, the voice of God. Practice floating. Practice your hydrotherapy. Drink your water. Mind your business and hold on to the spirit. If any of you are saying, I have strayed away, I am so far from hearing and feeling the spirit inside of me, I want you to just pray with me. If you say, I need to, I need to regain this, I'm, hyd- I'm dehydrated, I need to become hydrated again in the spirit. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Anyone who needs prayer right now, I I just want to lift you all up as we come to a close right here at 50 after. I just want to bless you. I want to tell you that living water already flows inside of you. It's all about the foundation that it's in, the vessel that it's in. We can grab hold of the Holy Spirit. We can grab hold of the living water. We can hydrate We can hydrate so that we can hydrate others. If you will bow your heads with me so we can pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much for this word. We just praise you. We worship you. We thank you. Thank you for your living water that dwells inside of us, Father God. Thank you for your streams of living water that flow inside of each of every one of us, Lord God. Lord, we know that your living water Your well will never run dry. Your well will never run dry, Lord God. We have an infinite amount of water in you, Father God, and living water, Lord. Father God, today we just take hold of it right now, Lord. Hydrate us, Father God, in the spirit, Lord. Let your living water flow, Father God, over us, Lord God, like like the rain, Father God. We bask in your rain, Father God. Hallelujah. We bask in your spirit, in your living waters, Father. Fill us up, Lord God, to where we overflow, Father God. We want to overflow in your spirit, Lord God. Father God, I ask, Lord, that as you fill us up, Lord God, Lord, that you rain on our situation, Lord God, that living water flows and pours onto the land, Father God, our lands that may have been dry, Lord God, the season that we're in that may be dry, Father God, hallelujah. I thank you for living water right now, Lord. I thank you for hydrating our our crops, Lord God, our land, our fields, Father God. I speak to dry bones right now, Father God. 
as you bring forth your living water, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that as you continue to anoint us, Lord God, with your living water, Father God, that we can soak it all in, Lord God, that as we succumb and we just submit to you, Father God, we give all over to you, all of our burdens, all of our worries, all of our life situations right now as we hand them over to you, Father God, we know that your burden is light, Father God. The burden is easy. The yoke is light, Lord God. We, we float on our back, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. And that as we do that, we are hydrated in the spirit, Father God. Now we can pour unto our families, Father God. We could pour unto our children. We could pour unto our spouse, Father God. Those around us, Lord God, our children. Thank you, Jesus because we are hydrated, Lord God. I thank you for everyone listening to this broadcast right now, Father God. As we share it, Father God, we just pray that this word goes out, Father God, like a ripple, Lord God, of water and speaking to nations, Father God, communities, households, Lord. I thank you and I lift up every family under the sound of my voice, Father God, that they may hear from you, Lord God, a new, fresh living water, Father God, that may flow into them, into their situation. We lift up our servant leaders to you. We lift up the house of my father's house, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your blessings, Father God. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I do want to, now that we've closed out the word, I do have a quick announcement. As you sip some more water, um, Pastor will be sending out a message to everyone on our um, on our app. So we'll send out a broadcast on the app of how you can tap into Right Now Media. Right Now Media is hundreds of videos um, from my father's house that you could tap into. He's going to roll it out next Sunday. So just wanted to give you all a heads up about that. We are also working on um, coming up with a more permanent solution to our physical in-person um, worship service, uh, corporate worship. So stay tuned and, and make sure you are following my father's house on Facebook here on YouTube, as well as Apostle Richardson, so that as we come up with this solid um, ongoing location, we can let you know where that is, where we'll be in person. We'll also be streaming on YouTube as well, so you can join us there. Um, I do want to prepare Carmen to um, give the benediction and completely close us out in prayer, so if she wants to get ready to do that. Um, again, I would love to hear from you all in the chat as you, um, hopefully this word blessed you, please write a quick comment in the chat so that we can see that and know. Again, if you haven't already, thumbs up this video and share it. The great thing about YouTube is that people can listen to this anywhere, anytime, um, even ongoing. So if, if you missed it live, you can listen to it now. <laughs> Um, Carmen, we want to bring you on to do our benediction. Yeah. Um, Everyone say amen for Carmen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. I ask that everyone that's listening to the broadcast that you are, you are covering and protecting them over the week. Um, until we meet again next Sunday, but let it not be the last Sunday, but let it be more Sundays to come. I ask that you will give us your living water and help us to pour into other people, spread the gospel. And as we're spreading the gospel, help us to keep your armor on. Help us to be able to not focus on other people, but focus on us and what, who you have called us to be today and every day and forevermore. I ask that when we lay our heads, that you will cover people and let your shalom and your complete peace protect and cover. I thank you for this day that you have given all of us today to be able to hear your good word. 
And now I ask that you would um, bless us and keep us safe. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Have a great day.